Welcome to our agenda briefing for the Ordinary Council meeting for the 22nd of April 2024. And as I open up this evening's Council agenda briefing, I'd like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the land which we meet and show our respects to Elders past and present. Councillors, tonight is an agenda briefing evening, and for those who are online as well, able to view, uh, just a reminder, this particular session is for councillors to ask questions and to seek additional information in relation to agenda items so that councillors can make a decision next week. The disclaimer, uh, note that this meeting is being recorded and streamed live on the Council's website in accordance with the City's public participation in Council meeting policy, which can be viewed on Council's website. All reasonable care is taken to maintain your privacy. However, as there are no visitors in the gallery tonight, but if there were visitors in the gallery, the presence will be recorded. By remaining in the public gallery, it is assumed the consent is given if the image is broadcast. The recommendations contained in the agenda are officers' recommendations only and should not be acted upon until Council has resolved to adopt those recommendations. The resolutions of Council should be confirmed by perusing the minutes of the Council meeting at which these recommendations were considered. Members of the public should also note that they act at their own risk if they enact any resolution prior to receiving uh, official written notification of Council's decision. I'll move on to the attendance this evening and we're joined tonight by Deputy Mayor Della, Councillor Winner, Councillor O'Donnell, Councillor Branley, Councillor Turner and Councillor Viscovich. Councillor Bodica is on a leave of absence and we have an apology from Councillor Johnson. Sorry, I think I didn't mention, I didn't think I mentioned Councillor Johnson, did I? No, because he's not at the table. Um, the CEO is with us tonight, Andrew Bryan, Director of Development and Growth, Alex Weiss, Director of uh, Community Development, Mia Hicks, and Director of Corporate and Commercial, Glenda Abraham. Also joining us tonight is the Director of Engineering, Louis Camparelli, and we're also joined by our additional staff this evening in IT and also in governance in Francis, Jamie and Raj. Uh, there are councillors no leave of absence at this point to consider for next week's meeting. However, you do still have the week to bring those to council. Uh, notations of interest tonight. Uh, councillors, it is not a decision-making meeting this evening. Uh, it is still considered best practice to disclose any interests in items being discussed tonight and I would therefore call for any notations of interests on items for the agenda briefing and please note that anything disclosed tonight will carry forward to the ordinary meeting next week. Councillors, any disclosures? Mm, I do have some here actually. From Councillor Viscovich, uh, tender regarding staff housing, that is 1543, a financial client of business applying for tender. Uh, from the Deputy Mayor regarding the sponsorship of the Sci Classic 1521 and impartiality as a participant in the Community Challenge. And I declare a financial interest in item 1525. That is a change of use to childcare premises, a financial uh, due to having a child at a facility owned by the applicant. Councillors, no other further applications? Thank you. Uh, procedure for tonight as follows. The relevant executive officer will make their way to the microphone and they'll give a brief overview of the item then open it up to questions on that item and where possible officers will also provide a response tonight. However, at times that may not be possible and we'll have questions taken on notice and responded to in writing by the ordinary council meeting next week. Into the agenda for this evening, we pick things up from uh, item, oh, sorry, item 15, yes, reports of officers from the CEO, Mr. CEO, through to the Director of uh, Corporate and Commercial, or you're going to take care of it tonight, Mr. CEO. Thank you, Mr. CEO. The SOFA, the Statement of Financial Activity, Feb 2024, Mr. CEO. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, in relation to the SOFA, there's no significant issues identified in there. As Council would be aware, we recently completed the mid-year budget review, so all figures are going to be pretty much on track with that. There are a couple of um, uh, variances in there and transfers to and from reserves, which will be corrected at year end. Some of that's related to our um, reserve funds, which are tied up in term deposits, so transfers can't occur until those deposits mature, which isn't until June, so they'll be reflected up and through until the June uh, SOFA. Thank you, Mr CEO. Any questions on the SOFA, councillors? The Statement of Financial Activity for Feb 2024. None taken. Mr CEO, 1512, Accounts Payable Report for March. 
Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. The accounts payable report, uh, Council, is about $10.5 million, slightly higher than the previous month, uh, approximately $1 million higher than Feb, with March including a $1 million quarterly payment to DFES. Otherwise, expenditure outlined in the accounts payable is in line with previous months. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillors, any questions on the accounts payable? None, thank you. 1513, Mr. CEO, this one stands with you. The Local Government Sustainability, the Standing Committee Inquiry. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, councillors, I'm still working through the draft uh, submission in relation to this inquiry. I will circulate that before next week's meeting. However, the key themes have been identified in there, which we're touching on. If there's any other areas you think should be covered, please let me know before next week and we'll incorporate those in the draft submission. Uh, otherwise, uh, it will be provided for, uh, hopefully, for endorsement next week. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor O'Donnell with a question. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, I refer to the challenges and considerations under that one. Uh, fiscal pressure, the balancing of budgets while meeting community expectations can be challenging. I know we're only just, we're still working through it. Do you, so far, have you seen any potential where this could impact on us in a big way? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. I, I guess the, uh, the comment that's made there is in relation to um, generally with any budget and rate increases, etc., it always does become a challenge. The removal of uh, additional grants and so forth from state and federal government creates additional pressure, as does cost shifting. So they're the sorts of issues I'll be covering off in that component. Uh, budgets are tight every year, we know that, and obviously uh, the impact on rate increases and so forth is the other aspect of that that we're going to have to consider as we move forward this year. Uh, and on that, we have some, uh, some updates to provide later on tonight. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Councillor O'Donnell answered your question, no? Councillor Turner. So my question was actually for the, uh, the same point that I saw that under challenges and considerations we had unforeseen events as in natural disasters, economic downturns or emergencies constrain local budgets. And we saw just in January just a small um, event with the power going out that, that would have had an impact on our budget. And given that the local government often has the responsibility at the start and then at the end of a disaster, and unless it gets declared a disaster, that can provide a significant um, impact on a local government's budget. So if that, just a question, have, you've obviously got it in there, so that's something you're very mindful of as a CEO and the pressure's there, Mr CEO? Yeah, it's certainly, it's, a, it's an issue that we are going to try and uh, flesh out a little bit in the submission. Uh, Any time there is a natural disaster, the expenditure incurred obviously is an impact for local government. And if it doesn't get declared as a uh, natural disaster or other disaster, then we wear those costs regardless. So we are actually supporting other levels of government and some of that when they should be uh, putting their hand in their pocket and coming out. So we will touch on that in the submission. Thank you, Mr. CEO. No further questions, councillors? 15.13. 15.14, salary and allowances tribunal determination for 24.25, Mr. CEO. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Councillors, the annual salary and allowances tribunal determination uh, has been released. Um, I've provided a copy of it to, uh, to Council for information. It picks up on remuneration for uh, CEOs and uh, elected members. The CEO component of that is dealt with through my review committee, so it's separate to this report. This is now provided to Council for information. Council currently sits at the, uh, at the top of band, so this would be an automatic flow on unless Council makes a decision in relation to that or changes that determination. Thank you, Mr CEO. Councillors, any questions? Councillor Winner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just through uh, the, the, the Chair to the CEO, uh, given this increase was not one that has been requested for by this Council, uh, two parts of the question is, a, do we have to accept this? And B, if we did not accept this, what effect would this have on our top of band standing? Mr CEO. Yeah, thank you. Through the Mayor. Um, council doesn't have to uh, accept the automatic flow on. It would require a resolution of council, though, not to accept it. Uh, the reason being council's previously resolved to maintain the, the level at top of band. Um, there's no impact on not being at top of band. Uh, simply, it's, it's a, a factor that's looked at uh, uh, each year as we move forward. So, it would take a formal resolution of council should you wish to not accept it. Thank you, Mr. CEO. Miss uh, Councillor O'Donnell. Just a point of clarification: uh, if a councillor didn't wish to take that, 
I would dare say that they could still accept, and then they could just donate it to a charity if they don't. If, rather than trying to get everybody on board, things like that. I just just more of a comment than a question. Take that as a comment. Thank you, Councillor O'Donnell. No further questions. Fifteen one five review of regional telecommunications in Western Australia, Mr. CEO. You got a few reports to write. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Again, councillors, I'm still working through the uh, the draft submission on this one. It was only released uh, towards the end of uh, last month, uh, seeking submissions, and they have to be in by end of this month. So, a very short window uh, of opportunity to get that in. I've identified uh, a couple of issues there which the submission will, will cover off on. Um, again, if there's any others that you feel need to be addressed, feel free to send them through to me before next week and we'll have the draft submission prepared by the, the meeting next Monday night. Councillors, any questions? Mr C, are you aware if Wolga are putting a position together on this particular document? Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Yes, Wolga uh, is putting one together on this one as well as the, um, the Federal Inquiry. No further questions. 15.16, Local Law Reform Consultation Standardised Meeting Procedures. Mr CEO. Yeah, thank you, Mr Mayor. Uh, Councillors, as you recall, we went through the um, overview of the, uh, the proposed amendments at a recent council concept forum. Uh, this will just be the formalisation of that process. We'll then prepare the submission and submit that following council's consideration of it next week. Thank you, Mr CEO. Questions, councillors? None, thank you. Item 1521, uh, Director of Development and Growth, Alex Weiss. Uh, Director on the sponsorship of the Cy Classic. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Council's asked to consider a sponsorship application from Cy Classic for the 2024 event. Uh, the application uh, requested sponsorship of $40,000. Officers have assessed the application and have made a recommendation to Council to maintain sponsorship at the 2023 level, which is $25,000 plus uh, $7,000 uh, in kind. Uh, the requested sponsorship amount equates to a 60% increase in, uh, in sponsorship um, and is predominantly driven by um, increase in, in charter fl flights and uh, the outsourcing of the event coordination. Thank you, Director. Noting that there is an impartiality here as tabled previously for the Deputy Mayor on this item. Councillor O'Donnell first. Question. Oh, was it? Hold that thought. Councillor yeah, Turner. Yeah, was more of a comment. Just a question through to the Director, through the Mayor. So if my calculations are right in what is in the report here, uh, they basically put the explanation that they gave us was that it was charter flight costs, which I can accept that they've gone up quite a bit with fuel and whatnot, but those costs had gone up 9500 but they had asked the city for an extra 21000 Sorry, they'd asked the city for an extra uh, 19000 sorry, because I've, I'm looking at the 22 figures there. So they'd asked us for an extra nineteen. so they had no other explanation for the extra $10,000, and as you said, that they had outsourced out of local providers, so that money would not be getting spent within our community. Is that correct? Is that the way I'm reading it? Director, would you like to answer that question? Correct. Uh, the, uh, the calculations by staff is that they've requested an extra $15,000 in cash sponsorship, um, but the value of the increase in charter flights doesn't match the requested increase. There was no evidence provided that they had gone to multiple um, charter flight providers to uh, see if they could ascertain a better value and no numbers provided in terms of the impact, in terms of whether they're flying up more people, less people, or what the uh, criteria are around the, the significant increase in charter flight costs. Uh, and yes, the, um, the event coordinator is Perth based, not local based. Thank you, Director. Councillor O'Donnell, question. Thank you to the Director. Thank you. <clears throat> yes, I thought it was staggering, for the, the huge increase to 48,000, and uh, the, <clears throat> the officers have put it, it is expected only an $88,000 into our community for a, for a $48,000 outlay. <clears throat> but there's going into two more shires, the Menzies and Leonora shires. Now, I'm just out of curiosity, do you know what they asked those shires for? 
thank you, Councillor. Um, in the bottle of the officer's comment, it references the total contribution by the other contributing shires, which is uh, $48,000 in sponsorship. So they requested $40,000 from the City of Kegley Boulder plus $7,000 in kind. Uh, the application shows that they had secured $48,000 in sponsorship uh, from um, the other supporting shires in the Goldfields Hespence region. Cool. Thank you. Councillor Winner. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just a quick one, uh, again, through the Chair to the Director. Uh, what risk is there to the event um, if it is known, uh, if the officer's proposed reduction to the application amount is approved by Council? Uh, we haven't been able to um, formally qualify uh, the risk, but we have gone back and notified them of the outcome of the report and haven't received a formal response uh, um, uh, suggesting that the event is at risk. So we're assuming they'll be able to raise that either through contributions from the other local governments or from private sponsorship. Thank you, Councillor Winner. Councillors, any other questions? Thank you. Item 15 at 22, Home Business 49 Lewis Street. Back to you, Director. Thank you, councillors. Uh, councillors asked to consider a, um, and approve a home business for the preparation of food, cooking, uh, and uh, furniture hire and event planning at a residential uh, location located at lot 49 uh, Lewis Street. The impacts of uh, approving the home business use have been considered and covered in, in the report, uh, and the impact is considered to be low and suitable um, for the location, and there is sufficient parking to cater for the small number of people that may be visiting the, the, the home business. Thank you, Director. Councillors, any questions? Councillor Turner. Uh, just to the director through the mayor, no objections to anyone having a home business. So I know how hard it is to secure business premises that are affordable in our city. However, customers per day, one, deliveries and pickups, two deliveries per week and two collections per week. So that's seven customers per week and perhaps 14 delivery or two deliveries per week. So seven customers per week. That's very low. Um, how would we be able to monitor that? There was no objections from any residents around, so that didn't seem to be a problem with anyone around it. So um, that obviously, I always hope that when someone has a home business, it will grow in size, that it doesn't stay small, it will grow. Maybe they'll outgrow their premises one day and be able to become a bigger business. So how will we be able to monitor that? Director? Uh, while we wouldn't be actively monitoring it, obviously residents in the area could contact the city if they had concerns and we would investigate and, um, and ascertain whether the uh, service levels and visitations are in accordance with the approval issued by council. Thank you. No further questions, councillors? 1523, Family Daycare, 174 Davis Street. Director, Weiss again. Thank you, Mayor. Now, council was asked to consider uh, the use uh, for a residential um, building or uh, family uh, daycare at um, number 174 Davis Street, Victoria Heights. Again, the, um, uh, the um, use of the building for family daycare has been assessed, including the noise and traffic impacts and are considered to be acceptable. Family daycare has also become a relatively common use in residential areas and through existing state legislation and local laws, any concerns can be effectively managed should they arise or be raised by um, residents in the area. Thank you, Director. Councillor's questions. Councillor Turner. Okay, again to the Director through the Mayor. So just, I suppose my question is actually going to be on this, but it's over the neck, the whole three, there's three proposals here for daycare. I'll just leave it to this one item Okay, first. so this yep. one, okay. So firstly, the owner of the property is different to the applicant, so I wanted to get some clarity there if it's a leased property or whatever there, and also the 6 a.m. Take that question first, Director. Yep. Uh, thank you. The approval goes with the applicant and not the owner. Uh, and you'll see in the conditions for approval, should the applicant um, not be a permanent resident uh, at the residential house, the approval will lapse. Okay. Next question. Next question. 6 a.m. start seems very early in a residential area for dropping off children. I know in some other home daycares it's a 7am start. 
So, uh, is there any concerns with that 6 a.m. drop-off start? Director. Uh, while it is in the um, most sensitive time allocation under the Environmental Noise Protection Regulations, given the very limited um, number of kind of visitations and the fact that um, quite often in Kerberley Boulder we do have people leaving for work uh, early in the morning and that you know, um, you're not talking about large commercial vehicles with engines at this stage, it's considered that the uh, noise impact will be minimal and not noticeable. It is something that can be, again, addressed through state legislation should we receive complaints about noise. So we would have an effective me mechanism to um, either require the, um, the change to 7am or to uh, require the operator to look at some effective control measures. Thank you, Director. Councillor Turner, any other questions? No, thank you. 15.23, no further questions, councillors. Thank you. 15.24, proposed childcare premises, 18 Adder Street, Lamington. Back to you, Director Weiss. Thank you, Mayor. Um, again, councillors asked to consider a change of use um, from consulting rooms to a childcare premise uh, for 39 uh, children uh, at 18 Adder Street, Lamington, Kapuli. Uh, um, the uh, use is an A use, which means it's an advertised use and therefore requires uh, council consideration. Advertising has been uh, undertaken and the application assessed and uh, city officers are confident that with the conditions, the, uh, the change of use can be managed and is appropriate. Thank you, Director. Questions? Councillor O'Donnell. Uh, to, to the Director. That location was originally, well, many years ago, the doctor's surgery, probably even when you were, were here, wasn't it? That is correct, Councillor. Yep. And I noticed submissions received, uh, two were objections and citing increase in traffic volumes and uh, impacting uh, the poor road surface and safety and impacts of noise. Do we know if these people, I take it these people are only new to town and not aware, but I used to go to that uh, doctor surgery, and there were a lot of cars, and there was no issues there uh, previously. Thanks, Director. Uh, thank you, Councillor. Look, I, I can't speak for both objectors in in that space, but I can speak for one who's immediately adjacent. She is a long-term resident uh, and did lodge concerns, but those issues have been, uh, I guess, appropriately assessed. One is addressed through an acoustic report. Um, and recommendations for um, a specific attenuation, including a construction of a, um, a, a sound wall to prevent the transmission of noise across the boundary. And in terms of, um, of road traffic and um, road maintenance, uh, the traffic is suitable for the types of roads and the widths of the roads that exist in that area um, and uses that occur in and around the, the property. Go ahead, Councillor O'Donnell. Yeah, th that, that was well replied, thank you. But that long-term resident, um, that's very ordinary in relation to knowing that that, that that surgery was a big surgery in this community. And I just can't see how they can uh, put this the same. But thank you very much. Councillor Turney, you had a question? I've got a couple of questions. I asked them individually to the director through the mayor. Go ahead. First one. Okay, so the first one is the parking, the rear lane access parking bays, are they in existence already and being utilised by what was happening there before? Director. Uh, so they are planning to, um, I guess, revamp and utilise the uh, similar parking spaces that were used by the consulting room. And there is a condition in the report that they seal the, uh, the laneway uh, and their hard stand area. Councillor O'Donnell, oh, sorry, Councillor Turner. Okay, and then I note that this one has a 7 a.m. hours of operation as opposed to a 6 a.m., so that's interesting. Uh, the lot size is 1,399 square metres, so it's a little bit bigger than a quarter acre, so it's a decent sized lot. It's for 39 um, places, which are very needed childcare places in our city. Uh, but then we have one further, next one is for a bigger size. Is that... The 39 places, is that just what the operator wants to use or is that all they're allowed to put there? Director. Uh, council uh, doesn't set the number of um, children that are uh, allowed in a childcare premise. That's set under separate regulations. The 39 represents the number of children that the uh, provider has applied for. 
um, terms of the um, hours of operation, the 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. is what's been uh, requested by the applicant and also is an outcome of the acoustic report which illustrated that they would likely have issues achieving um, compliance with the environmental noise regulations with the number of children uh, and potential visitations to the site. Councillor Turner, one last one. So the last one is with only 39 places there and such a big lot, will there be the capacity if the operator wanted to expand that to a bigger childcare uh, to go through the process with council again, would they be able to do that? Director. Thank you, Councillor. Uh, that hasn't been assessed as part of the application. Thank you. Councillor Viscovich and Councillor O'Donnell. Councillor Viscovich. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, my understanding of the childcare shortage this in Kalgoorlie is due to staff. I'm just wondering if the seven staff members they've mentioned are already on board or is it something that we may lose from another centre? Is it someone? Director, are you aware? Uh, no, we're not aware and we're not able to consider that as staff as, um, as part of the development application. Thank you. Councillor O'Donnell. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just following on from Councillor Turner and a couple of her comments. Regarding the starting times, is it the, what, like one was six, one seven, is it the applicant that requests the time or is there a certain window that um, they can only operate it? Like you said, this one's seven o'clock and the applicant applied for that. Can they come back and ask to have that varied? Uh, yes, they can. Right. So in terms of um, who's, how it's set, it's set by request of the applicant in making the um, application. Having said that, there are state regulations that govern uh, noise emissions um, levels to various types of premises, including residential houses, and all businesses must comply with those regulations. So uh, for an application like this, part of the assessment involves uh, an acoustic report that demonstrates compliance against the state regulations undertaken by an appropriately qualified professional. Oh, thank you. This being a, a mining town and a 24-hour town, what time can the daycare centre apply to start? Up there? They can apply to start at whatever time they would like to start, but the regulations, um, I guess, specify that the most sensitive hours, particularly for residential premises, so that's a, like a home or a hospital or something like that, um, is from 10pm to 7am, and so those levels are quite low. Uh, they're applied across the state and are not location specific. Councillor Viscovich. Sorry, one quick one, Mr Mayor. Um, I just wanted to know if the applicant is aware of the conditions that we are putting forward as yet, or is this something that, that we are going to be putting forward to them now? Director. As part of the process for assessment, there's regular communication with the applicant and um, uh, I would expect that they'd be well aware. Having said that, um, it is the uh, officers and the city that determine conditions, not the applicant. So from time to time, obviously, there'll be conditions that an applicant may not agree with. Uh, but there is right of repeal should they, uh, should they not agree with the condition. Thank you, Director. Councillor Brownlee. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <clears throat> uh, Director Weiss, is there a... Is there a clear age bracket that defines uh, children that fall within the early learning age group? Uh, the reason why I ask is because in the details of the proposal, it, it doesn't, doesn't really, I can't see anything clear that says that this is going to cater for children within a specific age group. All I see is that uh, the building is going to be refurbished to provide indoor facilities for different age groups. So will this, I see that it's a, uh, uh, it's for an early learning centre, but I mean, if there's no clear age uh, uh, age group or age bracket, is this going to be for teenagers as well, or is there a defined uh, age group of children that's going to be utilising this facility? Director? Uh, yes, there is a defined um, age limit, and that um, determines the level of supervision by staff. It's governed by separate state legislation, and it's not something that the, the city assesses in looking at the land use change. No other further questions, councillors. I have one for you, Director. In the 
recommendation you have stated that the facility is limited to a maximum of 39 children and seven staff at any given time. The applicant has asked for 10 staff when they're at full capacity of 49 particular participants. Are you able to give any further detailing around uh, that staff changing, noting obviously, as you've already mentioned, the, uh, the regulations and requirements of childcare providers for staffing? Uh, so should they get to a point where they're wanting to increase the numbers above their current approval level, they'd need to come back to the city for further approval um, and we would assess the application at that time on its merits. Director, is that particular number related to the car parking bays that they have? Um, um, I'd have to partly take that on notice, but I believe it's um, both parking and also um, noise. Thank you. Councillor O'Donnell. Yeah. I notice as well this premises, it's the old Paddington building, but behind the, the back fence is a, is a bottle shop. And that, did that come into consideration? I don't know. And especially uh, with things going on, um, I don't think, well, I'm just saying personally, I don't think it's right that a child care centre Go ahead, Councillor O'Donnell. Don't worry question. about the rest. Sorry, question. Uh, was that taken into consideration? Councillor O'Donnell, you'll find that, that premises has been de-licensed, but Director? Yes, yes that premise has been non-operational for quite some time and it's been converted into a lodging house. Google Maps needs updating. <laughs> Councillors, any further questions? Fifteen two five chains of use to childcare premise number sixty seven to seventy one Dugan Street Kalgoorlie. Uh, declaring a financial interest in this myself, as I have a child in a childcare facility uh, which is owned by the uh, owner of this particular property. Councillor, uh, sorry, director. First of all, director Weiss. Uh, thank you, Mayor. Again, Council's asked to consider a change of use from office to childcare centre to support um, a childcare centre for 84 children and 15 staff at 67 to 71 Dugan Street, Kerbally. Um, again, the, um, uh, it's an A use in the scheme, so it requires advertising and council consideration. Advertising has been completed and the results are included in the report for council's review. Uh, the use of the land and the impacts of the childcare centre have been assessed and are uh, considered appropriate with conditions and, are, and the application is recommended for approval. Thank you, Director. Councillor Viscovich. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, just a quick question, the fact that we've got three, three childcare requests. Are the applicants advised that we do have multiple requests for different centres? I would hate for them to spend a lot of money developing these and then competing with each other to try and find their clientele. Director? Uh, no, we don't um, have conversations with applicants about other ap applications until they become public. Um, so at this point when the agenda is released, obviously they will be, uh, be aware. Um, it's the expectation that uh, people undertaking business activities are undertaking their own due diligence and we uh, try to avoid providing advice in that regard. Councillor Viscovich. Thank you, Ms Mayor. Just to follow up, so is that something that we could potentially put forward to the applicants to mention we have other applications? No. <laughs> The director, uh, sorry, the CEO has shaken his head quite prominently to my left. Uh, Councillor O'Donnell. Now I think I'm on the right one. I made a mistake. Ha has the officers taken into consideration the busy bottle shop behind the back fence of this proposed childcare facility? Director. Thank you, Councillor. Um, yes, the location of the liquor land bottle shop has been considered, but there's co uh, considered to be appropriate separation and the access to the childcare centre is from the front, uh, not from the rear. So we believe there'll be um, no exposure to children um, or um, you know, antisocial um, behaviour experienced by um, children and, and parents visiting the childcare centre as a result of the change in use. 
Councillor uh, O'Donnell. I don't know if it's a point of clarification or not, but um, I'm basing on my policing experience for 30 years here and even since then observation. But that laneway from the bottle shop down to Wilson Street, which goes right the length of the rear of that uh, proposed daycare, there's many people with substance abuse or substance abusers walking down there. Um, so it's not just out of sight, they can hear, can see, and and have been known to sit and congregate at the back of that uh, premises. Um, uh, I'm, try I'm trying to think of the question is, what, what, did the, what did the officers do to take this into account? What steps? Thank you, Director. Uh, we've, we've looked at the location, look, antisocial behaviour and other unlawful activities are a matter for, for, for the appropriate authority. Um, and uh, the premise is secure with no entry from the laneway and is you know, controlled with two access through the front. Uh, with a you know with a high rear fence. So in looking at the application and the the suitability of the land for the use, we believe it is suitable. If there are uh, other issues occurring in the area, then you know it would be the responsibility of either the, the occupier of the childcare premise or surrounding premises to report that activity to the appropriate authority for follow up. Councillor Turner, is that a question yet? Okay, so mine's a follow through the director through the Mayor, a follow-up from Councillor O'Donnell with the same concerns I had with that bottle store. When I'm reading in the details of the proposal, it says that it includes 13 on-site staff car parks, a delivery bay, and nine existing parking bays within Dugan Street. So I'm thinking that those parking bays in Dugan Street are the front entry ones, but it also includes rear lane access. It specifically states in there with access also available from the rear lane, which is what Councillor O'Donnell has said. So if this access to the rear lane, I'm thinking perhaps that's the 13 staff car parks, but that would still provide a concern for me because that's my first question is what parking is at the rear because it says in the details of the proposal that there are parking, there's lane access. Do you have the map there, Councillor, to look at? Yep. Director? So if you review the map, you'll know the, um, the parking is on the side of the property and there is a secure remote gate um, you know, controlling access from the laneway. Um, obviously, if staff are coming in, uh, they would report or, or not enter if they had concerns about you know, people in the area. Um, and the police station obviously is in very close proximity to the child care centre. Councillor Turner. Okay, so my next question is also about parking. Obviously, we must meet our parking requirements. However, the previous one seemed to have had parking, had seven staff with parking that seemed to be for five. This one has 15 staff. With, I'm just a bit confused about the parking requirements, if there's enough there as well. So, are city officers satisfied with that because also the on-street parking on Dugan Street is only nine parking bays for 84 children, all, I would think, arriving at very similar times on a busy street that also has a school not too far away from that. Director. Are the applications being assessed uh, against the requirements of the scheme and is considered to be compliant with the city's parking requirements in the scheme uh, when on-site street parking is taken into consideration uh, city officers in making a recommendation to council on parking uh, can't ask for parking to be um, provided uh, in excess of what's in the city's scheme. Councillors, any further questions? None taken, thank you. 15.3, Community Development. Director Hicks, Golden Quest Discovery Trail, Partnership Service Agreement 24.25. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Golden Quest Discovery Trail was launched in 2003 and incorporates 965 kilometres of driving trail throughout the goldfields of WA, including the city of Kalgoorlie Boulder. 
Council is requested to approve a one-year partnership service agreement for the Golden Quest Discovery Trail and authorize the CEO to endorse an MOU. Thank you, Director. Councillors, any questions? None taken. Thank you. Item 15.4, Director of Engineering, award of tender T014-2324, Supply and Construction of Bitumen Surfacing. Thank you, Mr Mayor. <coughs> Council's asked to consider an award of tender for supply and construction of bitumen surfacing, <coughs> which includes the asphalt resurfacing, the red asphalt for shared use paths, the bitumen seals, the profiling of the roads ready for sealing, supply of hot mix, cold mix, asphalt, as well as bitch, bitch and emulsion for the works depot. There was three tenderers and tender A was preferred. Thank you, Director. Councillors, any questions? Councillor O'Donnell. That's okay. The um, under reports uh, number nine, the distribution of information flyers to be supplied to the community affected by the works. I've experienced road works in my street, and oh, sorry. and um, there was nothing, nothing whatsoever. In the, and uh, I've even there's been the odd road work elsewhere where people have said we didn't even know this was happening. Um, how how can we guarantee that they are conforming to what they're supposed to do for that? Through Go ahead, mayor. director. Yep. yep. Um, this is a new contract, so there's been a tightening up of the contracts, and this has been added into the contract so that um, people are made aware um, in advance, and this is one of the parts of their contract they've got to comply with. Councillors, any further questions? Uh, Director, this particular tenderer, are they the current provider? That's correct, Mr May. Director, has there been any correspondence regarding the quality and the finish that we have experienced under the current contract? The quality um, has improved significantly, significantly in the last six months. And the finished product? Is a, far, is a massive improvement in the last six months. Thank you, Director. Councillors, any further questions? Thank you. 15.42, still with you, Director. Uh, quarterly reports on major projects. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Council's asked to accept an update on the quarterly reports on all major projects. These are the projects for the third quarter of the 23-24 budget. Currently, there is 23 projects um, classed as major projects. 14 of these are on track, three of these are on track with minor issues, and six of these projects are off track. Thank you, Director. Councillors, any questions on those particular items? Noting that there has been an update, obviously, on some of them since the report was compiled, being the 31st of March, it's now the 15th of April. No questions, thank you, Director. Still with you, Director Camparelli. 1543, award of tender T011-2324, staff housing and design and construct project, noting a financial interest from Councillor Viscovich. Go ahead. Thank you, Mr May. Council's asked to consider an award of the tender for design and construction of staff housing. There are three houses to be built, one on lot 13 Osmetty Drive and two on lot 59 Fair Thea Place, with one currently one local company submitting a tender for the works. Thank you, Director. Councillors, questions on that particular item? None taken. Thank you, Director. Mr CEO, we do have one item to consider in a confidential status. Would you wish to take those questions by closing the meeting and then potentially Do moving from there? there are any, questions? any questions on the confidential item, councillors? There is questions on the confidential item, so therefore we will cease with the we will cease with the streaming for this evening. First of all